Hey everybody, it's Roy from ANS Gear. We're upstairs with a Mini Jazz and an Axe 2.0 because we get a lot of questions. What's the difference between an Axe 2.0 and a Mini GS? People want to know why they should get one over the other, which one's better than the other one, um, and what the difference is. I think mainly the, the question is what's the difference between the Mini GS and the Axe 2.0? So let's uh, open them up and we'll look. So we'll start with the boxes as they are. We'll open up the boxes. We'll show you what comes inside of them, what you're getting, and then the differences between the two and whether you should get one over the other. Um, but I guess I'll get to that when we get to that. So uh, let's start with the boxes. Almost, the boxes almost look identical from the front right here. Just one says Mini GS and then the other one says X 2.0 on it. So, um, but it's the same box set up right there. The back of the box uh, even looks a little different right there. That's just because it's got two different printings on it right there. All right, so we lay them down. Let's open this one up, get the top out of the way. And we've got an all gold one here. And then we've got an olive and black one right here. So inside the box, once we open it up, you're getting your guns right there. And then move that out of the way you're going to get your barrels. Um, originally, back in the day when the Mini GS first came out, it came with a one-piece barrel. Now, the Mini GS comes with a two-piece barrel, just like the Axe 2.0, and they're both 688 bore sizes. So, the barrels are identical between the two guns. Same barrel, same tip, same bore size, just depends on the color that you're getting right there. So, to now, or for now, uh, the barrels are the same. So whether you buy an Axe 2.0 or whether you buy a Mini GS, you're getting the same two-piece barrel between the two of them. So you're going to get an awesome board barrel. 688 is pretty standard, although paint tends to be trending a little smaller than that right now. But at least you'll be able to get out on the field and play. Uh, you can find other backs for this barrel tip, both the Mini GS and the Axe 2.0, that are smaller or larger in bore size right there. And the Mini GS and the X2.0, both cocker threaded. So if you want to down the road, you can find um, extra barrels that maybe fit more to the paint you're shooting. But um, from getting what you get in the box right away, the barrels between the two guns are the same. Parts kit, get almost an identical parts kit in there. Some of the O-rings that come in the X2.0 are going to be bigger because it has a bigger body on it. Also, the detents in the Axe 2.0 are different than the detents on the Mini GS. We'll talk about that. So you get those in there, but you're getting the grease, you're getting the tools, all that jazz in there. Um, also, you're getting a barrel sleeve. Same exact barrel sleeve between the two right there. All right, let's put these back up here and let's take the guns out of their boxes. Box here, box over there. All right, so we've got guns, 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 guns. Let's come in a little bit right here on our two guns. So we're going to start this side right here. Axe 2.0 Mini GS. Comes to feed necks, we've got basically the identical feed neck between the two of them. They both have a composite body right here and then an aluminum lever on them. They both are using the same size brass housing right there. So they are interchangeable between each other. They both use the same body as well that clamps onto the, um, the gun body itself. So it, the feed neck is not threaded itself, is not threaded into the body of the gun. Both of them use a design where there is a insert that is threaded into the body, and then this piece clamps onto the insert right there. So it's a very, very secure system for clamping on uh, a lever right there. If we look down to the front of the gun right here, they both come with rubberized front grips, and they both have rubberized um, main grips right there. Right here. So here's the probably one of the biggest differences between the two. I'm going to take this off real quick. I'm going to take this eye cover off so that we can look underneath here. And then I'm going to take this detent off. 
All right. So here is our eye cover off on the 2.0 and our detent separated on the, um, the Mini GS. So the G Mini GS detent uses a sprung detent like this. So when the ball rolls by, it pushes the spring uh, back right there and pushes the detent and spring in. So the ball is able to scoot by. And there's one on each side. So it holds the ball in place. So when the ball gets pushed forward, it just pushes the detent out of the way, which works great. On the X 2.0, they use a rubber detent, a little finger that looks just like this. This is the same style detent that is used in the Planet Eclipse guns. Um, so it's very, very common, very easy to find if you break it uh, or need to replace it. But by looking in this section right here, you see a major difference between the two guns. One of them has an eye wire. One of them does not. Let me put this detent back in here and then we'll talk about that. So this gun right here has an eye wire. So on the Axe 2.0 and the Mini GS, there are two boards in the gun. There's a board that is in your front grip, which you use to push a button and turn the gun on and off and do your programming. There is a secondary board, which runs along the top, sandwiched between the frame and the body in both of them right here. In the Axe 2.0, that board has a wire set that comes off of it and it wraps up around the gun on both sides right here. And off of that board, the wire isn't coming up, have your two eye sensors on them. So if you break paint inside the gun or have an issue with it, you can pop the sensor out of its home. You can bend it back. You can clean it, clean the goo underneath it, clean the paint, clean the slot that it sits in and then put it back and put your eye cover back on and be ready to go. On the Mini GS, the eyes, these sensors right here, are hardwired onto the board itself. So if you break paint inside here, the housing that the eye sits up inside can get filled with paint. And in order to clean that out, you have to separate the gun all in pieces, pull the board out, clean the eyes off because they are part of the board and then clean the holes. And it's really hard to get in there because there's a real narrow slit where these eyes go up inside there. Um, it's really common that people break paint or when they break paint uh, that they pull the board out, clean the eyes on the board and then just stick the board back in and the eyes get covered in paint again because there's paint up in the gun that you have to clean out. You're going to need some pipe cleaners, Q-tips, everything to get inside there. So that's, uh, from a cleaning standpoint and in use standpoint, that's a huge benefit that the 2.0 has over the Mini GS. When it comes to servicing and cleaning, much easier to do that section of the gun on the 2.0 than it is on the Mini GS. Um, let me put this back on here. All right, so let's stay up on the top section right here. We'll talk about the bolt assembly. So the bolt on an Axe 2.0, there's a button on the side right here. We can push this button down. Woo! And we can get our bolt right out of there. Makes it super easy to get the bolt in and out. It just button pops out right there. On the Mini GS, if we want to take that out, we have to physically unscrew the rear bolt, the rear frame screw back here. We have to unscrew that. And you can see it's a screw that's got a post at the end of it right there. That post goes up into the bolt and locks it in place. So if I put my finger in there and pull this out, right here, this one there's a slot that's cut into the back of the bolt right there and this screw goes right in there and it locks the bolt in place so that the bolt cannot come out the back of the gun now is that important yes it's important so that when your gas guns up it doesn't uh, when your gas guns up when your gun gas is up that it doesn't launch the bolt out the back of the gun but also when you're coming to do maintenance it's much easier to just be able to pop the bolt out the back of the gun than have to get tools and wrench it out. So 
Um, I'm going to call that a benefit for the 2.0 as well. Easier removal of the bolt assembly. And one other thing you can see, the bolt assembly itself is larger on the 2.0. We've got a bigger body on the 2.0. Right there, you can see the difference in size between the two bodies. That just means with the larger body right there, you have a larger volume of air inside the gun. Larger volume of air can equate to better efficiency, can equate to a bunch of other things, a smoother shot, a quieter shot, um, efficiency can be better on it. Um, efficiency we're not going to really get into with that one, but um, it's a upgraded system right there. Larger volume of air running in the gun can add have some added benefits to it. I really think when we're talking about benefits though, being able to just pop the bolt out the back with a button rather than having to wrench it apart, that's a big difference right there. So I like that. Um, moving on. Uh, one thing actually, while I've got this out that I'm gonna remind everybody, if you're thinking about getting one of these guns is the spring. So it's the same spring setup on both of these, same bolt. This is the bolt right here. This is the bolt guide. So bolt goes on the bolt guide, spring goes on the bolt. There is one direction where the spring has uh, resistance when it's trying to go over. There's another side to the spring that does not have resistance when it goes over. Do not put the spring on with the non-resistant side fall or leading. You want to put it on where it feels resistance when it tries to go over and then it snaps into position on the bottom. That's how it should be not the other way around. I get them in all the time where they're backwards. So um, just the thing, since we've got it open and out right now. All right, moving on to um, triggers. For the trigger in the Mini GS, you can see they're kind of the same shape right there. They have the same like magnetic return and everything. But to get the trigger out of the Mini GS, there's a pin right here that you have to hammer out. So it has knurling on one side, you would have to get a punch, and from this side, you'd have to punch the pin out, the roll pin out, or the bar, um, pop it out this side, and then you could take the trigger out. For the uh, 2.0 over here, I don't know if I have the right one, the screw on the side, you can just undo it, pull out the screw, lift it out, and then your trigger comes right out. So if you need to clean your trigger or you want to uh, replace it with a different shape, design, brand, whatever, doing so is much simpler, much simpler, let me repeat that, much simpler than uh, doing it on the Mini GS. Now, if you have the right tools and you've done it before, it is not hard, but for someone who doesn't have a punch, doesn't have the um, wherewithal to to know how to do that you can cause problems when trying to remove the trigger and get it out so easier to do on the axe 2.0 than on the mini gs lastly we've come down to the uh, regulator down here um, the regulator they are exactly the same regulator they have the same lever down here they have the same body they have the same body shape they have the same cap everything is the same except for the gauge on the Mini GS. Now you would think that if you're paying a little bit more that you would get more parts on it, I guess. Um, I wish the Axe 2.0 had a gauge on it just so that the people using it would understand it a little bit better. Once you're familiar with the gun and you've, you've handled it a million times, the gauge, you don't need to have it on there. It's not a necessity. But for people that are playing, and typically people buying a Mini GS or an Axe 2.0, um, they need to have all the information possible in order to be comfortable with the gun and understand how it works. And having the gauge on there, knowing where the pressure's at is so good for people. It makes them understand where it needs to be. Um, there's ways to set the gun up where you don't need the gauge and you can do it, but it is a definite bonus, I think, on the, the Mini GS to have the gauge on there. I think, uh, I think, well, I shouldn't say I think it should be on there because I know it doesn't need to be on there, but it definitely helps people out when it is on there. So um, I think that's a plus for the Mini GS right there. Having the gauge on it, I think is, is a good thing. Wish it was on the 2.0. All 
Um, as far as um, just overall size of the gun, the Mini GS is a tiny gun. It is small. So if you are younger, smaller, smaller hands, shorter arms, the Mini GS is an easy gun to handle. Axe 2.0 is a little bit bigger. So, um, you know, it is bigger for, uh, for bigger handed people. The grip frame is bigger. The distance between the trigger and the front is bigger. The body's bigger, the length is bigger. So uh, you're, if you're looking for something that doesn't feel like a toy in your hand, a lot of people think this is just feels too small for them and they need something bigger. The 2.0 fits more into that. Now, obviously the 2.0 is more expensive than the Mini GS and you can see the reasons why. You're, well, it used to be you got a, bigger, a better barrel, but you don't anymore. But the bolt's better, the trigger's better, the eye system is better, the ease of cleaning is better, the um, the setup ergonomically, I think, is better because it's bigger. But again, I need a bigger gun. I don't need a smaller gun. But you're paying more for that. you got to kind of weigh out, well, what I'm paying, does it make sense for what I'm going to do or how I'm going to use it, the amount of time I'm going to play? Am I playing every weekend? Am I playing twice a week? Am I playing once a month, once every three months? Those are all factors that you need to think about before you pick one or the other. Um, there's obvious benefits for the 2.0. You can see it just from what we've gone through, but you're paying more for it. So some things you got to think about, um, which is better in my opinion. Um, I think the X 2.0 is a better gun. That's my opinion right there. Uh, ease of use, ease of maintenance, um, ergonomics, everything. I like the 2.0 better, but that is not to say that the mini GS is a bad gun. They physically work the same. The bolt assembly is the same. This one might be a little bit bigger, but it still works the same. The interface between the trigger and the boards are the same. So physically, the guns fire super similar to each other. There's a lot of other nuances to it that make it, I think, a better gun for the 2.0. So I hope that helps. I hope a lot of people um, who are out there wondering why would I want to get one over the other? Because they look exactly the same. Hopefully these little subtle differences um, breathe a little bit of insight and light into why you might want one or the other. So there you have it. The Axe 2.0 versus the Mini GS. What's different? Why is one better than the other? Which one should I get? Hopefully it solves your questions. If you have any other questions that you'd like, put them in the comments so that we can do more videos for you so you guys can get all the information you need. Mini GS's Axe 2.0 is available on the website. Order yours today through ansgear.com.